Welcome everyone, brothers and sisters, you are welcome. The Almighty God bless you. So we have been dealing with the topic growing in the spirit, growing in the spirit. And we made the point very simply that growing in the spirit is about growing to the fullness of Christ. Our text is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Let's look at it again. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God in, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. You can continue because it continues as you could see. Key point is the knowledge of the truth and of the Son of God. Praise the name of the Lord, the knowledge of the truth and of the Son of God. That will make us grow to the fullness of Christ. And we have dealt with point one, which is the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. The mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. And point two, which is the church. Today, we want to look at point three, which is the Holy Spirit. And let's just very quickly again remind ourselves of that point one, because this is where the whole thing hangs together. And I encourage us to study this scripture personally, deeply reading it from verse one all the way to the end, as I had uh, informed us to do before. So we made very salient point, glory be to God. The mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. Colossians 2, 1 to 3, you remember? That's where that word specifically in verse 2 uh, is used. Say that their hearts may be encouraged being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. We made key point, point one, that the Father and Jesus Christ, his son, are two distinct entities. Point two, both the Father and the Son are to be worshipped by all creatures of God, humankind and angels and all creatures in heaven and on earth. And we've seen that in the book of Revelation, how particularly we go to Revelation chapter five. We've seen how all creatures worship the Father who sits on the throne and the Lamb of God, and they worshiped. Point three, that the Father has given his Son as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind, the world, and those who believe and accept the Son of God, Jesus Christ, receive eternal life. John 3, 16, we all know that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You have to be absolutely clear of this, that Jesus is the only way to eternal life. The Father has given his Son as a sacrifice for the sins of mankind and the world, and those who believe and accept the Son of God, Jesus Christ, receive eternal life. And then point four, that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, came in human form, died and rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, and sits 
at the right hand of God. He is seated at the right hand of God. Point five, that the Father has put all things under his Son. That is, all power, authority, dominion, preeminence is in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has all power, all authority, all dominion. Remember in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, 19, there Jesus, after his resurrection, came and declared, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, so all those who come, therefore, to Jesus Christ have become part of his body. That's why it is very important for us to understand the body, the body of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. And so you and I are part of that body. We have become part of Jesus Christ as uh, the scripture we read in Ephesians chapter 4, if you read it all the way uh, further down beyond uh, 15, 16, you would continue to see. Uh, in fact, if you also go to the beginning of that Ephesians chapter 4, let's even look at it at the beginning from verse 4. It says, there is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling. Five, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Praise the name of the Lord. So the body of Christ is part and parcel of Jesus himself. So we have become members of his body. It is very important for us to understand this because we're talking about growing to the fullness of Christ. It is only those who have become part of his body that can grow to the fullness of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. And we made the point that the body of Christ is spiritual and it is Jesus Christ himself that builds his church that builds his body. So every one of us then is an instrument in the hand of God by his spirit to continue to build this body uh, so that nobody is confused um, uh, because of some of the questions that were asked uh, the, in the last session. I did make the point clear that there is nothing wrong with the organized bodies. But we must all know very clearly that the organized bodies are uh, a means, a means for us to continue to do the work. We ourselves are the body of Christ and we are to build that body is in our doing our own um, bit, as we would just learn now by the Holy Spirit. That's why we're going to the Holy Spirit right away. That is how we contribute to the growth of that body. So first, we ourselves being sound and then being used by the Spirit of God to contribute. That's how we become, uh, and we contribute to the building of that body. I think our sister made a very sound point uh, that we didn't emphasize enough last uh, Sunday, so let me read it. And she made the point, it's the comfort made the point and said, that is why no one should claim God is using only his or her ministry or organization to draw up people for his kingdom. Indeed, that is really true. Um, Jesus will use every vessel of his that is available. That's why we're teaching this. He is looking for vessels that are ready, that are available to use, to continue to bring 
growth to that body. How does the body grow? By more souls coming into Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me just illustrate this with uh, an, a story I have told us before, something that happened. How a brother once told me, he said, Pastor, why is it that he is not seeing fruit in his labor? That he goes out and he will evangelize, he will preach, and people will give their life, lives to Jesus. But he would invite the same people to church, and they don't come to stay in his church. And they may come and then they leave. And as I always do, I pray to God, give me wisdom to be able to answer this brother, your truth. And so the spirit gave me the wisdom to share what I'm going to share with you now. And I asked him, I said, do you believe Jesus is faithful? He said, yes. I said, good. So Jesus said, when you go, I am the one who builds my church. We are the human vessels to go out and he will do his work by his spirit. So he went out and Jesus proved his faithfulness. Souls, he wins souls. So those souls have been added to the body of Christ, right? He said, yes. I said, so why do you then think you are not fruitful? You see, this is exactly the point because he was looking at the organized, his own organized body that he belonged to, forgetting that it is the body of Christ, that spiritual body that Jesus builds, that the adding of the souls. So let us go aggressive in preaching Jesus, the one who saves sinners. And as sinners are added to the body, are saved and being added to the body of Christ, that is the body of Christ growing. I believe this explains clearly. In fact, um, if you remember 1 Corinthians chapter 3, you can look at all the way verses 4 uh, to 9. I would like us to look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's remind ourselves of these scriptures from verse 4. It says, For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not Cana? Verse 5. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, that ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one? Can you see that? 6. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. Seven. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Amen. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Nine. For we are God's fellow workers. Can you see that? You are God's field. You are God's building. This is what we're talking about. If you read further, you hear about the foundation that is Christ, and we are all to build on that foundation. So uh, the brother got the answer, and he learned. It is the body of Christ, not the structures. The structures, they have their own usefulness. So again, we are God's fellow workers. As you could see there, First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, for we are God's fellow workers. So we are to yield ourselves. Now, Jesus says, I will build my church. And he does that by his Holy Spirit. So he gives his Holy Spirit to his children who have come to him. And so that takes us to the Holy Spirit. If you just take a step back and summarize, we understand the mystery of God, his son, Jesus Christ, the savior, 
the one in charge of all things, the one through whom God has redeemed the world, mankind to himself. So Jesus, everyone who comes into Jesus becomes part of his body. That's what we are living for now. It is. That's, so to continue to build that body and nourish that body, God gives his Holy Spirit through his son, Jesus Christ. To us, his body, the spirit that enables us to do the work of God, to do and preach and teach like Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe that summarizes everything now. So very quickly, let's look at the Holy Spirit. Let's look at John chapter 14, verses 12 through 18. John chapter 14, from verse 12 to 18. And then we we'll also look at verse 26. These are familiar scriptures. John chapter 14, from verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah. 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. 16, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Glory be to God. This was the promise of Jesus Christ. I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter. Prior to that, he already had said that, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than this he will do because I go to my Father. And he said when he goes to his Father, he will pray the Father, and the Father will send another helper like himself. He will be with us forever. Praise the name of the Lord, that he will not leave us. He will abide in us. Let's look at verse 26. Look at verse 26. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Glory be to God. So as his son, as his daughter, as a member of the body of Christ, Jesus said he will pray the Father to send another comforter, to send another helper. And what will be his duty? He will teach us all things. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And of course, you know that in Luke chapter 24, I believe, when Jesus rose from the dead, was before he told the disciples that they should tarry till the Holy Spirit comes. Chapter 24, verse 40, uh, 48 and 49. Let me just read 49. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. So from that day of Pentecost, as recorded in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came down, and the Holy Spirit is here and filling every member of the body of Christ, equipping, enabling, helping us to continue to build, to be partnered with God in God's work. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. And so two scriptures you must spend time to study are John chapter 14 that I've just read, and the next one is Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We just read a few 
verses, and then let's have some chat. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, concerning the Holy Spirit. You must read these two scriptures, of course, along with a whole lot of others. Um, Romans chapter 8. I will read from verse 1 to 10, and then we'll look at 11 to 17 and look at verse 34. And we'll take a few points from there. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Can you see that? Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Now this is here. This is the crux of the matter. Growing in the spirit. Who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Two. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Declare it over yourself. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Three, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Can you see that? So we meet the righteous requirement by depending on the spirit. That's it. God has already done it for us through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has become the sacrifice, as we already learned before. And so our duty is just to then depend on the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at that verse 3 again. It says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. So Jesus has taken care of sin side, right? And now he has given us the Holy Spirit. What do we do? We just depend on the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. That's the, where the difference comes. So the things of the spirit, putting our minds on the things of the spirit, depending on the Holy Spirit, learning from him, paying attention to what he teaches us. Six, for to be carnally minded is death. And you see that, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you've got to make up your mind to depend on the Holy Spirit. He has been given to us. If you have come to Jesus Christ, you have become part of his body. And he has given his Holy Spirit to members of his body. The Holy Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit works in us. We are then to grow in this spirit. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Eight. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we please God by depending on the Holy Spirit. Nine. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Did you see that? The only identity of one that is in Christ, in God, is the Spirit of God. 
who is also called here the Spirit of Christ. And so the Holy Spirit of God, the same Spirit that dwelled in Jesus Christ when he was here on earth, that enabled him to do such great work, that same Holy Spirit has been sent to you and I to do the same work that Jesus did. Glory be to God. Ah, that's a whole lot. Verse 10. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11, a lovely scripture. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The spirit of God in us. His life quickens us. Amen. And so be rest assured that the Spirit of God is in you. And depend on the Spirit to produce the life of God in you. 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Take note of this, brothers and sisters, because this is how where why we built it. Up gradually to come to this point. This is where we there, need to pay attention and do our own bit. It says we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. We are debtors to live according to the spirit, and that is by being conscious of the fact that God has given us his Holy Spirit, and depending on the Holy Spirit, having dedicated time and effort for the Spirit to teach us and for us to learn from the Spirit and for the Spirit of God to use us to do all that pleases God and His Son, Jesus Christ, in love. Amen. 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So how do we become sons and daughters of God? By the spirit of God. By being led by the spirit of God. 15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So by this spirit, we cry confidently that God is our Father. 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. How many people have witness in their spirit, by, their, by the spirit? that they are children of God. That's the Holy Spirit. Nothing more. We are children of God, brothers and sisters. We have received the Spirit of God. The Spirit of Christ dwells in us. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. We have received the Holy Spirit. It's time to pay attention to this Spirit and not walk carelessly as those, that are, as those that are still living in the flesh, but allow the Spirit to teach us and enable us to grow. 17, and if children then hairs, hairs of God and joint hairs with Christ, hallelujah, we are joint hairs with Christ. Glory be to God. I jump to verse 34. And just make emphasis there. 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also makes intercession for us? Who also makes intercession for us? Of course, you already know verses 26 and 27 of this same scripture. He said, like, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought 
but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. 27, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Who is making intercession for the saint here? The Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let me make a few points because the scriptures are full of the blessings of this blessed Holy Spirit. Let me summarize. Oh, glory be to God. Growing in the Spirit. One must come to a place where you are able to communicate with the Holy Spirit. Note that point. One must be able to communicate with the Holy Spirit. You must be able to communicate with the Holy Spirit. If you cannot communicate with the Holy Spirit, how will you know what the Spirit is saying? So as we've seen there in verse 27, he said, now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit, we must come to the point where we are able to communicate with the Holy Spirit. This is the journey. To be able to do that, number one, you need a deep awareness and consciousness of the Holy Spirit presence with you all the time. You need a deep awareness and consciousness of the Holy Spirit presence with you all the time. Number two, you need to have personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I call it courting the Holy Spirit. You need to court the Holy Spirit. Personal fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You need to befriend him so deeply, so personally. Number three, This is where your personal fasting, prayer, meditation in the word of God are required. This is where your personal fasting, prayer, meditation in the word of God are required. You have heard me say many times, you don't need fasting to receive the Holy Spirit. But you need fasting for your own self to get rid of the noises and, the, the, uh, 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 and develop the sharpness to hear the Holy Spirit, to be conscious and to learn. You just need to give him time. This is the personal work that you must do. And it is the Spirit himself who trains us up it is the spirit who opens our eyes to see. It is the spirit who opens our ears to hear. But we have to give him the room to do that in our life. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Please note this, First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. Desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby. Colossians 3.16, you know, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly. This is where I will break for today. I believe we've gotten enough to walk with. And the spirit of God fill every one of us and transform our lives to the image of the Son of God, that God has made us to be by his Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
let me pause here. Maybe there are questions, there are contributions. Feel free to open the line and share for the short time that we have left. I still want to again challenge us that it is Christ that is the standard. We are to grow to the fullness of Christ. That is, we are to do what he did. We are to teach what he taught. Praise the name of the Lord. As Acts chapter 1 verse 1 that we shared last Sunday stated, yeah, or states. And there are a number of things to touch on uh, regarding manifestation of the Spirit's power. Everything Jesus manifested while he was here on earth, he has given us his spirit to manifest the same. That is the standard. Mani regarding manifestation of the spirit's power, you remember, he brought Lazarus from the dead after four days. Hallelujah. He raised Lazarus from the dead after four days. Oh, the widow of Nain's son, he brought back Jairus' daughter. He brought back the same power, of course, manifested in Peter as well. When he brought back Dorcas, this same power manifested in Paul when he raised Eutychus. That power is available to you, is available to me in the mighty name of Jesus. He healed all who came to him for healing. That is as regarding manifestation of the spirit's power, this spirit that we have received, God has given to us, his spirit through his son, Jesus Christ. Regarding righteousness, he was sinless. And we have seen also that by the spirit of God, God has given us his spirit and has made us meet the righteous requirement. Regarding teaching, he taught the kingdom of God, the salvation of God, the way of God. Regarding eternal life, he resurrected from dead and ascended to heaven, hallelujah. This is all that God Almighty has made us to be. It's time for us to live and be who God has called us to be through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Okay. Um, Pastor, I thank you so much for effective delivery of your teaching and we have greatly benefited from the teaching and the awareness that the Holy Spirit lives in us and we have to work, continue to work so that the Holy Spirit will guide us and help us. So I wanted to find out if you could uh, help us more with these scriptures. I was reading, uh, reading Philippians chapter two, verse 12. It says, therefore my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So walk out your own salvation. That was what, how do we understand that scripture in terms of uh, our spiritual progress? Excellent. Uh, I would allow at least one person contribute to this. At least one person, please. What do you understand by this, especially with all that we have shared. This was Paul speaking to the people of Philippi. 
Therefore, my beloved, so in case you didn't get the scripture, it's Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I think it's important to add verse 13 because it's complete with verse 13. There was a colon, or in fact, a semicolon there. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. I think that provides the answer, actually. Uh, mm. <laughs> is there anybody who wants to make a contribution, please? Okay, so this is what the scripture is talking about here. Uh, if you look at verse 11, yeah, in fact, there were, it was a whole long uh, discussion that started from verse 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, of those on earth, of those beneath the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. I haven't said that. I said, therefore, therefore, following that, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. So it was basically saying, continue in this life. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> that, that is what the working out. Continue in this obedience. Continue living this life. Verse 13 then puts what this working out your salvation is. They say, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So that's what the scripture there was referring to, and that's what it is. It is a continuing dependence in the uh, spirit of God to help us, to train us, and as we continue to do what the spirit leads us to do, to glorify God in our lives, to also contribute and build, be the work, the co-worker, as we read before, in the building of the body. In the building of the body of Christ. Please go ahead, sister. Go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to say, okay, we will walk out your salvation and never walk for your salvation. So we, like you have rightly said, continue by uh, God's grace we've been, we have been given the Holy Spirit. We have become a born again Christian. We have received the spirit of God. So we have to continue to walk, produce the fruits of this uh, fruit of the spirit so that we continue to dwell in this spirit that God has given to us. So not because uh, we, it is our own merit, but no, the no. grace of No, no, is it, neither is it our own power. That's again yeah. very important that yes. works out any salvation. It is yes. God by his spirit that is working in us. So mm -hmm. it's for us to be obedient and continue to heal ourselves. For God Thank to you walk so in much. us and walk through us. Yeah. Thank you. We want to pray again because now it's time. You have heard that we need to do our own part. There are some of us who don't have personal fasting and prayer at least once a week or say sometime in a month. If you're such a Christian, you have to change today. You must start setting aside at least a day in a week, or if it is going to be a day every two weeks, or a day or three days in a month, what you can do, you have to set out a time. You must dedicate time to the Holy Spirit to sharpen 
your awareness and alertness in the spirit. And so let's turn it into prayer now and say, Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit upon me afresh in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit, giving me your salvation, giving me your eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for opening the way for me to access the Holy of Holies, the presence of God, the Spirit of God. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Tell him, Holy Spirit of God, I surrender myself to you now. Now, Holy Spirit, I want to court you. I want to fellowship with you deeply, deeply, deeply. I want to befriend you deeply. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, befriend me. Befriend me, open my ears to hear, open my eyes to see, open my mind to perceive, to understand. Help me, Holy Spirit, to be able to dedicate myself to you, to do the will of God. Use me to please God. Use me to please Jesus. Use me to build the body of Christ. Use me to do God's will for my life. Thank you, my Father, my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you have connected and you have not given your life to Jesus and you're wondering, ah, these things uh, they are talking about, once you give your life to Jesus, your eyes will be open. So go ahead right now and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I accept the sacrifice that you made for me the sacrifice of your body, the sacrifice of your blood, I accept and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. Heavenly Father, forgive me my sins. Forgive me all evil, all errors, all mistakes, all iniquity, all transgressions. Forgive me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And now also ask, Father God, give me your Holy Spirit. Change my life by your Spirit and let my life please you. Let my life glorify you and help me to grow in the Spirit as I have just learned. Thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you, brothers and sisters, that the Spirit of God will cause you to increase and you will grow in the Spirit by the grace of God, by the power of God, to the fullness of Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, all of us will grow to become exactly what God has created us to be. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.